Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see everybody in the chat. Hello there. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After Occult, where we recap what's happening in Scientology news across the internet. And I share about my 35 years in Scientology with three generations of my family and how we left and left together. Sidebar, my sister is finally back from Hawaii. She was back home visiting our other sister, and she's going to be coming on again Early on when I uh, started on YouTube, my sister Lana joined for some live streams and she is going to be back. She went into the C organization at 14 and uh, she's been here sharing her story before she did a bunch of traveling. And uh, I'm hearing a lot of things and learning a lot that I never knew, never knew. And we're close. <laughs> so she will be back. I wanted to give you guys a heads up about that. Thank you so much to my moderators this morning. I do believe Nancy's here. Thank you so much. Good to see everybody. Hello to all the members there too. This is so exciting. I so appreciate you guys who are taking advantage of the membership and the fun levels we have. Naughty never in. I kind of forgot what they were though. Squirrel. Did I? I think I pulled them up. Here, we'll take a quick pick and then we're going to get quick peek and then we're going to get rolling. Here they are, Naughty Never In, Squirrel, Not Today Thetan, or A Suppressive Person. And each level has different perks. We're going to be having a lot of fun with that. I'm going to be having a lot of fun with that. Tony, too. Tony's actually going to be having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> My Tony. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so today, here's what we're going to be talking about. We are going to be talking about some news from Scientology Audit Streets LA, William Goode. We are going to be talking about a truth bomb that Nora, oh no, Nora dropped. And I think more needs to be done about this. I have thoughts, ideas, and I want to hear yours. We're going to take a look at some LA protesting D Defender of Ants, his new channel, The Lore of DOA. I've got like, I think three clips because he was just he was just on fire yesterday, so we're going to share that. We're going to take a look at Chicago because we know Chicago's opening this weekend. And we have a new protester live streamer out of New York. We're going to share that. Take a peek back at Austin, and we are going to discuss Miriam Francis's latest video and response to Mike Rinder and his blog article. We're going to save that one more towards the end because I know y'all going to have a lot to say about it, and I want you to focus on the stuff before myself included. <laughs> Half the time when I figure out the order we're going to do this is like, okay, where can I like, you know, just keep going and not get too stuck on it? Because I'll just want to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing here today. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, please check your buttons, check your buttons. I get a good amount of emails to people who, um, who it looks like they've been unsubscribed. And I find that myself too. So I always check my button when I'm on somebody's channel and make sure I'm subscribed. Hit that like button as well. That is, I'm told, supposed to help with getting notifications out as well. Those seem to be slow moving. Still figuring that stuff out on YouTube. Leisha or Leisha, thank you so much for becoming a member. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> we got some fun things planned. Yes, Fluffer Squirrel, definitely hit the like button on the way in. Thank you. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. We are going to start with some amazing news, amazing news that I hope that most of you have already heard about. And that is that the charges have been rejected, the charges against LA Cam and Danny. Let's take a look at... Um, you know what? We're actually going to go look at Streets LA's page because there's there's actually a few things that we need to talk about and go over and some ways that we can support him actually. So let's let's take a look at that. Multiple things on there. I'm like, oh, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about that. Okay, so first off, uh, late late in the afternoon, early evening, depending on what time zone you're in. Uh, Scientology audit Streets LA. William Good shared how. Where'd it go here? Here. How he just got off the phone with the LA District Attorney's Office. The case against all three Scientology La Poubelle protesters were rejected. Danny and Cam do not need to show up for court. Okay, one, that took long enough, it seems. Secondly, that is amazing news. Never should have happened in the first place, but this is really good. And 
I just, I just have so much appreciation for William Goode, what he's doing, how he is advocating, standing up, educating everything. Him and I are working out a time for ha to have him come on the channel, but we're connected now. We're going to figure out a time soon and I'm going to have it on, have him on. I have a million questions. I'm so excited. I'm like total fan girl. I'm totally a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't make, make that merch, I swear I'm going to, because I saw somebody, some, somebody has that as their YouTube name, the good girl, just variations to that. And I want like a sweatshirt or something that says that. So you tell me, tell me in the chat, in the comments, would you want that too? I thought it was so funny and I want to do that. Okay. So also what he shared is that, um, a counter protester who many of you have encountered secured a temporary restraining order for elder abuse against me without notice and based on false allegations. The evidentiary hearing on the permanent restraining order he has requested be issued against me is on March 5th at 8.30 a.m. in Department 13 in room 312 of the Los Angeles Superior Court located at and then he gives the whole address. I invite my supporters to attend if you can. If you are in the LA area, show up, show up. You can find these details, Scientology Audit Streets LA, go to his community tab and you will see that all here. He goes on to say, the person who brought this action against me is attempting to use the courts to silence me on my protest against Scientology which is a violation of my First Amendment right to free speech and assembly. I'd appreciate it if you can attend this hearing. Thank you, William Goode. So if you are in the area, go get all the details off of his community page and show up. That's on, what did he say it was? March 5th. March 5th at 8.30 a.m. Department 13 in room 312 of Los Angeles Superior Court. He shares the address and everything. So I hope that uh, a lot of people show up to support him because he has shown up literally for everybody who's needed it. And he continues to show up even for people he doesn't even know. All right. The other thing, there was one more thing on here that I wanted to share. Oh, actually, there was a couple things. He was on fire yesterday too, sharing all kinds of stuff. Okay, here. Another attempt at getting a restraining order against me, this is specifically being done to prevent me from exercising my First Amendment right of freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. It won't work. And here's the information on that. This is the owner of La Poubelle, uh, Francois Coster, I think is how it's pronounced. And he gives some info there. And you know, early on, William Goode, he called it. He was saying early on, they're going to try to get restraining orders against me. I mean, he saw this coming. He saw this coming. And let's see, was there one more thing? This was just so dumb. A certain stalker of mine is doing goofy stuff. They put up these stupid flyers of, uh, because William Goode dared to take his dog for a walk when it was raining <laughs> into a crime scene, apparently which could be almost any place in Hollywood if you're out walking around. <laughs> so ridiculous. He, but I love that he takes it all in stride and shares it and showing up for court when he's there is a way that's going to, you know, it's a way that people can support him as well. So I hope people in the area go ahead and do that. I want to share a clip from a video that Oh No Nora did. And I like, I tell you guys each day, not that you need reminding, but of why, we do what we do, why we're here, why, why I'm here, which is to put an end to Scientology and their abuses. And Norris shared something that I, I was vaguely familiar with the story, but I didn't realize that this happened at what is now the Hollywood Testing Center. Didn't realize that. And we're going to take a peek at this. There are links down below to all the videos that I'm going to talk about, and I recommend you go and you watch them. The highlights I share do not do them justice uh, for many, especially this one with Nora. Just a fantastic, fantastic share. So let's take a little look and a listen. I meant to go to the tense center while I was there. I didn't get a chance to. One thing they don't talk about the test center, and I wish people would, and I would love to get people to start doing this, is that uh, Aaron Poulin's name was at the bottom of that list. Aaron Poulin was a born in second gen 
to the Sea Organization. And um, he was featured in the second season of um, Leah Remini's show, uh, Scientology in the Aftermath. His widow, Marie Bielheimer, spoke about him because, uh, you know, they were married at the time. Um, what is now the test center was under construction at the time that he took his own life. He, he hung himself there in the test center. Basically in what's, I think now, either the film room or like that hallway area. People just literally walk on his bones every day. Bringing new people in to the place of his death with no thought about him, no memorial, no remembrance. They told people that he blew, that he was out ethics and he blew the Sea Org. Amazing. It, it's one, unfortunately, it is not the only story like this, but it is, it's, it's a powerful one. And I hope, I agree with Nora, I hope that more is done to, you know, a memorial, something, something. If somebody knows the full name of who she's speaking about, can you put it in the, in the text and, or in the comments? But uh, watch the whole video because she shares a bunch of stuff. But I was like, man, that's right. That then became the Hollywood Testing Center where that happened, right inside. And it needs to be known. Thank you very much, Mandy Me. It needs to be known. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be remembered. So I would love to see a memorial or a vigil of sort to acknowledge that this happened. And the fact that Scientology turned around and told people that he blew, and in Scientology, that means to leave without authorization, to take off, to exercise your right to freedom and walk away without them telling you it's okay to do that. And this is typical of what Scientology does, especially in the Sea Organization. They will lie. They will give what they call a sure story to cover up what happened and to not share the truth. But we know the truth. And there are enough people talking about the truth. And so many of you who have never been in Scientology are here today and now, and you're going to amplify this truth and get the word out. And that is the difference today between what's happening today in protesting Scientology and any other time. It's honestly, it's all of you coming together and supporting people in the ex-Scientology community and here on SPTV. And I know I appreciate that more than I think I could ever tell you, but I'm going to keep telling you, I'm going to keep telling you. And I'm so glad that Nora did that video. There's a lot more that she talks about. It was, it was, um, emotional, but at the same time, so necessary, so necessary. So thank you, Nora, for doing that video and you guys go check it out. Go check it out. Absolutely. Check it out. I wanted to say, I wanted to share something else. Uh, I think it's Utology. Link down below for the full video. I just have a clip of this. It's just, I love looking at the streams from LA and what was going on, uh, you know, when the SPTV creators and the other protesters were all there. It, and Utology does kind of like these mashups of videos. And we're going to do, we're going to take a little peek at this one because I just, I just loved it. Here comes Jess. She's out of control. <laughs> Yeah, I I think she was trying to stop. Hey, oh no! Oh, it's DOA! It's DOA! DOA! You guys! I love Aaron's enthusiasm. It's just, it's, I just love it. Good timing! Ha 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 
Here comes Jess. She's out of control. <laughs> I just thought, love that. Just a couple highlights from that. And yes, Aaron has the best laugh. He definitely does. Yes, uh, Nance Drew, we need to share that. Uh, DOA has a new paint job on his van. I'm amazed. Um, I love that he shares videos of him doing it because I'm just like, how do you do that? How do you do that? And he does it and he did it. What a crew. Exactly. Exactly. I just love that. Okay. And speaking of Jessica Palmadessa, who was in that video on the scooter, just zooming down L. Ron Hubbard way. She did a video. This was a little while back, but I thought it was really fun. I had a few people send it to me recently. So some of you may not have seen it. And I thought it is worth sharing again. And this was a little bit in the earlier days of the Hollywood Testing Center, where she tried to help Scientology out by taking Kanye West in there to see if they would let him in. This guy really does look a lot like him, by the way. I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with that, but check this out. ...building and they threaten to call the cops. I know they love name dropping celebrities like Lady Gaga. <laughs> so this time I'm gonna go back in with Kanye West and see if now they'll talk to me. Let's go. She's gonna... uh, it's Kanye West. We know you guys love celebrities, so I came back with Kanye. What did you say that no filming? Look, look. God, so now you've been messing with Kanye. Yes. What do you mean? I have YC. They're not having it. That was from the early days of the testing center, but I've had a few people send it to me multiple times. So I think some hadn't seen it. So I wanted to share that. And I just thought that guy, I mean, obviously a Kanye West impersonator, but he did look a lot like him. He did look a lot like him. And Twilla at first, I think, right? Corn Freak, I think you're right. Like Twilla was like, she wasn't sure. I, I feel like for just a second there, she thought, oh, could it be? I mean, how can you not? He looks just like him. How funny would it be if it was the real Kanye West and they were like, no, no, there's no recording in here. They got their little sign up that they send people, send people to, <laughs> to go check that out. Okay. Tori Magoo 44, another one that I'm going to interview her and have her on the channel because she is just an OG protester from back in the day. Also was on the other side where she was actually dealing with protesters and critics of Scientology and she crossed the line and freed herself. She is such a wealth of knowledge. And I love that she still has the same spitfire personality intention that she had back then. I swear the woman is aging in reverse completely. And I'm working on coordinating with her to have her on, but I wanted to share this and tell you guys to go make sure you're subscribed to Tori Magoo 44 and listen to this. I might be old and I might have my walking stick, but I can still kick ass, right? <laughs> and we all laugh. And I realized that that's a huge change for them right there. Now I think, well, now wait a minute, nobody else came out, right? So I think, all right, let me just go down and I'll sit on, they have a little um, bench that's basically for anyone and they let anyone sit on it except for us, the declared suppressor people. And of course me now, the CIA agent. So, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but Scientology has a narrative going that Tori is an undercover CIA agent and that she always was. And that's why she left Scientology and joined the other side. How ridiculous is that? I got to give them points for originality though, right? There's a theme here. Scientology will make up a narrative to tell its people to explain why people who they once respected and looked up to are no longer there. In this case, it's because, well, Tori, Tori Magoo, she, you know what? She was in the CIA. She was in the CIA the whole time, the whole time. That's why. That's why. And it's good that she's gone now from Scientology. <laughs> it's so nuts. They did the same thing when my husband at the time and I left Scientology. They, you know, they come up with their folders. They call them their dead agent packs. And 
share what they think you would be embarrassed by, or they outright make things up. And I was so amazed because I had multiple people tell me what they were saying. Like, I'm a, I was like, okay, what's the narrative? What's the story behind why my husband at the time and I are leaving? And it was so stupid. I was so disappointed. <laughs> Tori Magoo's over there at least has, you know, at least their narrative is she's part of the CIA. All Scientology could come up with for me was some a complete lie about my husband at the time. And I mean, all, actually it was kind of boring. I was just like, that's, all, that's it? That's it? You make me feel like, like you don't care. Like you don't care that I'm gone. <laughs> of course, I'm joking, but they totally do that. They make up stories and change the narrative. Now, the lore, the lore, the lore of DOA, Scotty, he was out. I don't know if you caught his stream the other night, but the fire department had been showing up at La Poubelle around there and acting oddly, showing up, going out, leaving. But, you know, they've done that, right? They've, they've been these false calls. They've showed up. I think he mentioned something about they said it was a drill at one point. But what's weird is they're complete ignoring the protesters who were out there who are asking questions and communicating and no answer. And I love this. He actually went, he went to the fire department to just be, Hey, what's up? You know, there's these false calls going on. Is there anything that we can do that I can do to help prevent this from happening? Because it is not the protesters who are making these calls and we support you guys. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. Pokeroo. Yeah. They're probably setting something up. Could very well be. So let's take a little look and a listen here at DOA talking to the uh, few of LA Fire Department firefighters. As far as like a statement on, on what's going on, that's I would call Fire Station 27. You can ask to speak to one of the representatives there or even the battalion chief that's going to have more information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm concerned. It's concerning because there's been so many calls. And it's kind of been weird how they've been coming in. Oh, at you guys don't do La Poubelle, do you? Sure that That's up by like the Celebrity Center, the Scientology Celebrity Center. That's not your jurisdiction up there, north of here. Um, I know because there's multiple protests going in multiple locations, and there seems to be a fire truck call every day. So I'm trying to to help out whatever I can with the different influencers that are doing that, so that we could maybe get to a, the bottom of who's making all these false police calls and stuff. Yeah, we, we don't have any idea. We get a, a dispatch that comes through our station and we go and respond to the call. That's it. Okay. Any information. And that's interesting. So, you know, they're saying they don't, they don't really know. And then they gave them some information of how to maybe find out how to, well, just basically how, who, who he could talk to to maybe find out and get to the bottom of it, which would be, fabulous. But I love that he did that. You know, he just kind of like, hey, this is weird. Uh, we should have a better relationship here. And he went out and, and did something about it. I love that. I absolutely love that. Invisible Mother Tarot. Thank you so much. Hi, it's Modern Memes. I made good girl, good girl merch and much more. I sent a link to William, but he's too busy. I sent you a sample a few weeks ago. Oh, yes, with the t-shirt, the but it didn't say good girl on it. Because if you did send me that, I did not get it. Um, so let's chat about that. Let's definitely talk about that. Granny G, thank you so much for becoming a member. That's so awesome. Thanks, Granny G. Okay, so now you got to see this. It was another sign. It was another, it's always a sign. It's a sign that things are moving in the right direction. And only as DOA could, he had a conversation with a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> this was just funny. And I had like multiple people sent me this. I thought it was cute as well. So I'm glad that you guys thought it was fun and thought it was something people would want to see. Check this out. Oh, you're with me, huh? You're back up. All right. Perfect. <laughs> you just stay right here. It's a dangerous situation, buddy. I know. I know. It's super dangerous. We're going to figure this out though. It takes a month. Of us. Hey, just talking to squirrels. Yeah, they're... <laughs> just talking to squirrels just talking to squirrels <laughs> but did you see that thing i mean it's like it was listening to him it went and then it came back around and was like oh sorry i didn't know you were talking to me what was that 
squirrels representing just showing up that that was so fun remember too in Clearwater not long ago that happened with Lori too Lori plays where the squirrel came right up and just was sitting right there yes selfless self DOA the squirrel whisperer <laughs> oh I love that so much I just did I kind of want to like save that somewhere on my phone and then when I need to smile I can just take a look at it and see I'm talking to squirrels and squirrels were not the only thing or person that DOA was talking to yesterday. He ran into somebody and and please excuse me because I don't know too much about this guy beyond that he's an artist and he's a musician. John Roker, I believe is his, is his name. But I knew that all of you out there could probably, some of you could fill in the chat or fill in the comments who he is and his background. And apparently he's been protesting Scientology. And I thought this was a really a really neat interaction and I wanted to learn more about him. So tell me what you know about him in the comments. Tell me what you know about him in the chat. Check it out. I want to tell you, when we did the first protest here for Danny Masterson for the rape trial, yeah. it was at one o'clock and I got here at 101, there was guns pointed at my head. At 101, there was one, two, three, four, five, of those, of those, of the, of the LAPD cruisers, yeah. and they had got the PI that was protecting the protesters because he had, you know, I remember that, yeah, right, right yeah. and he had them, and he had, everything was fine. He had a, a firearm yeah, on and everything, but at one o'clock, a minute after, they were on, and it's nuts. And that's it. And then my favorite thing is this: so Why was one o'clock the uh, uh, point? It, it was a time for us to go and, and meet here. Okay, but actually at one o one. We had just we had arrived there at one one minute of stepping onto the sidewalk. The cops came, and then my most hilarious thing is so one of the women I forgot her name of Nickelodeon actress that was oh yeah yeah most we are she had a bullhorn and they and they said you can't bless you basically you cannot use a bullhorn in front of a church. I go wait what it's and then what they did was. Yeah, the little seating area. They had a seating area sign, yeah. with a little sign saying religious service at 10 o'clock on Sunday. So guess who came back on Sunday? Me. Yeah. Who was there? You know, and I have the chairs. No. What? They were gone. I know. Couldn't believe it. They were there just for optics? I Big surprise that Scientology lied about having a religious service just to get rid of protesters or at least stop them from using a bullhorn. That is so on brand for Scientology. But that was neat. I thought that was a really cool interaction. And like I said, if you know more about him, Lisa, I loved his jacket too. Let me know. Let's talk about it in the uh, in the comments. Invisible Mother Tarot, thank you so much. Sending you a new package. The Good merch is new. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. In the description, I have a new PO box. So uh, make note of that. If you sent me something before. There's a new P.O. box down below, but thank you. I cannot wait to see that. Cannot wait to see that. But yeah, I thought this was a super uh, interesting interaction and a fun one. And another story again of how Scientology hides behind this whole cloak that they are a religion. And we all know, you know, when I was even in Scientology, growing up in Scientology, I didn't know a ton about other religions. I knew a little bit because if I stayed over at a friend's house, I might go with them to their service if it was over the weekend. I knew very little, but it always, I still knew that Scientology never felt like when I go to their church, how that felt, that feeling of what a religion would feel like. Scientology to me always felt like a business. It was a business. It was a job. It's something you did, something, you know, all this pressure, not, not a religion, not the place you would go to if you were stressed or, or needed help. It's the opposite. It's often the stress or the source of the problems for why you need help. Not at all like what other regular churches were. That even growing up, I remember clearly thinking that. And it's a thought that, you know, of course you suppress and you think, well, I can't think that because Scientology is a religion and their propaganda keeps telling me that they have tax exempt status and they're they're acknowledged by the IRS of being a religion. So surely they must be, right? If the IRS says you're okay, you must be. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. I unsubscribe to that. And then today, of course, I absolutely know and recognize, despite what they want to claim, they are not 
they're not a religion. It is not a church. Not in the traditional sense, not even traditional sense, just in the sense of what what a church really is and the community give back that should be occurring to justify the tax exempt status. That is not happening. And it's not happening in Chicago this weekend, big weekend people, big weekend. Chicago Scientology organization is opening. They're opening the new building. Links down below to the videos that I'm talking about, go subscribe to them because there's going to be so much content and coverage of what happens this weekend in Scientology. And we're all going to be on the lookout to see little Davy Miscavige because you know he's going to show up to pull down the big ribbon and the garbage bags will fall away. Because in Chicago, they had garbage bags over their sign too, just like in Austin. So there was some weird things going on. We got a couple clips here in Chicago and it was a little like... I got to be honest, it kind of like, I don't know, it made me, I'm still trying to process my feelings over a couple things that I saw because I I felt a little triggered in a a healthy way, in a way that like, oh, I remember that emotion. Anyways, I'll show you the clip and then we will talk about it. Check this out. Is this the Scientology building? You don't know? I'll bet you do. So those are, you can see that looks like a box of Fiji water, or maybe they used it to pack, but it's probably water because you can see other water. Most of these new ideal organizations have a cafe in them, but all the boxes of books and lectures, all of these things that need to be put out and done for the opening, I'm telling you, these people are not getting any sleep. They're they're likely being kept there overnight to work on this because that's just how it goes. Sea Org members getting ready for the grand opening. See how they have those ganky uh, curtains hanging and now we've been spotted by at least one person, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything. This guy doesn't give two shits what we do. This man, that's why he said I don't know. You know, it was two things I think that really got me about this. One was him just continuing to do his job and just completely ignore her like that. And then seeing the people in there just got me thinking like, oh my gosh, I bet. Because in Scientology, they do have what's called an all hands. All hands means everybody comes in and needs to handle whatever it is, needs to tackle whatever it is, regardless of your need for sleep or food or anything. You're just all hands on deck and you're taking care of it. And here's the problem with that though. Once in a while, right? Even even in business, sometimes something happens, you got to take care of it. You need all hands on deck. This happens all the time. Scientology and the C organization is famous for their emergencies that aren't really emergencies and all hands on deck, which then is supposed to justify the lack of people not getting sleep, people not being well fed. So it just, my kind of, my heart kind of broke like, oh my gosh, I know this is happening to them, that the staff members there and the C organization members, they were getting all set up and they, they just got to be wrecks. The pressure to make this happen, to have it be right and perfect because David Miscavige, the chairman of the board, is coming and he's going to be there. The fear, the fear of what will happen if they don't get it done. All that stuff kind of triggered me in the stress department because I remember those feelings and they're they're just horrific. We got more, um, I got a couple more good clips too from, from Chicago. And this I think is Nance Drew and Shannon. Check it out. They're opening this Sunday, so yes, a bunch of people are coming to protest. How do you feel about it? I mean, I'm on live right now, just so you know. Okay. I mean, I've gone to school here for like three years. At Columbia? Yeah. And I've been waiting to see what they're going to do. That's totally insane. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Austin, they opened last weekend. It was crazy. You could Google it or YouTube it. And uh, tons of protesters were there. It was amazing. And so there's going to be hopefully a good showing here, too. On Sunday. On Sunday, it's going to be big. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, I won't film you if you don't want me to. Yeah. Do you want me to 
Yeah. I let her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you mind saying your name? I think it's kind of close to me. It's my phone. The mic. Okay. Isn't that interesting how the students around there, I mean, they know they've kind of got an idea about Scientology and what it is. This is not a secret. It's known and it's becoming more known and largely due to social media. And how you can have one person out there and it can reach so many people. Of course, the mom in me feels the need to say, don't go alone, don't go alone, <laughs> go with somebody. But with social media, we can share these messages and these news and educate people on what Scientology really is in a short amount of time. And it can just be gotten gotten out all over the place. Another thing that they're practicing in Chicago is they're really good at hide and seek. I had no idea. Maybe there's a new course in Scientology that gets done where you get really good at playing hide and seek because this seems to be a new tactic. And it was caught on video in Chicago. Tim, look. What do you want to bet in the next five minutes he is going to peek out from behind that van? He's probably making a phone call right now um, to tell, the, tell them that we're here. Look at him. He's standing behind his van. He's not even fully hidden. Like, I almost feel bad. Like, just go completely and hide because you're. It's, it reminds me of like, a you know, one, my grandkids. I have a, my youngest, my granddaughter, who is turning three. I can still do this. I'm hiding from you. You can't see me. <gasps> now you see me. And, you know, she kind of believes it still. This seems to be what this guy's doing. Because we just walked in front. He first waved at the SPs, which is probably going to get him in a whole bunch of shit. Oh, there he goes. Let's see if he turns around. Nope. All right, let me, let me just scooch over to the other side. See what we got going on. Nope, he's hiding clean behind the van now. But he has gone in for reinforcements. You guys saw Nancy. You've seen me. Scary shit. Scary, scary. We're so scary. Yes. At least he figured it out and he just was totally able to hide behind the van. <laughs> it's, you know, because again, we've talked about this. Scientology, especially the Sea Organization members, I'm sure they are being told, you better not be caught on video. You better not be caught on camera. Because why? Because these people have families outside of Scientology, a lot of them do, who probably haven't seen them in years, maybe even decades, who maybe aren't even sure if they're still alive. And they're being caught on video and this is being shared all over the internet. And it opens the door to those families going, hey, look, there's Bob. Look, there's Janice. <laughs> we, we, should, we should find out if they're okay. We just saw them. So much of it is because of that to keep them out of that public eye. Scary stuff. Jen Nelson, thank you so much for gifting five Scientology Life After Occult memberships. Truly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let's see. Do we... Uh, where am I at? Oh, New York. We're going to go to New York now. I was excited to see this because I've not really seen much lately uh, from the, in the protest world out of New York. Uh, I actually been to this org in New York. I was there at the opening. Did I go for the opening? I know I was there right before. I'm pretty sure I was there for the opening. Yes, I was there for the opening. Now I'm remembering. It was a while ago. I've been out of Scientology for 13 years. So it was probably maybe like 14, 15 years ago, I think, when they opened. It's crazy that it's been that long, actually. Wow. Gosh, that is crazy that it's been that long now that I think about it. But check this out. This person had an interesting, very interesting interaction. What's your uh, opinion about Danny Masterson? Do you know Danny Masterson? Okay. I just wanted to ask you your opinion about Danny Masterson. I don't know. I know his name. Okay. But I don't have anything else. Are you a Scientologist? Okay. So Danny Masterson. Are you recording? Yes. Oh, we'll stop so recording. I'm, just, well, I, I'm on a public street, so. I understand. You don't have to answer well, any I'm questions. Well, I have no data. Other than I know his name. Okay. Well, I'll give you some data. He was just convicted of raping three women and he's spending his life in prison and wow. he's a, and he's a Scientologist wow. in good standing. I don't 
he's still a Scientologist in good standing. I won't. I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to come back, too. I love that. I'm going to come back, too. She's all, stop recording. Stop recording. He gets to do that. That's so interesting because did you see she went into the building and she turned around and came right out that revolving door. That's what should happen, Scientology. Anyone going in there should come right back out. It should be a revolving door of X members because the 20 to 40,000 Scientologists in the world, and that's being very generous. Y'all are future X Scientologists. Revolving door. She almost did it, right? She went through and came out. Just got to keep walking. Just got to keep going. They do not have the power over you that you think they do. Trust me, I know this one because I thought the same thing. Liz Ferris brings new meaning to we come back. What do you think, Natalie? It completely does. Completely does. The the Sea Org's motto is we come, we come back because as you guys probably know, we sign a billion year contract to come back lifetime after lifetime to forward the aims of Scientology and do the work of L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, no, we come back. We come back to help get other people out. That's what we come back for. We come back to share the truth about Scientology. We come back to expose the crimes about Scientology. So we did, Liz, right? We did come back. So I guess we are doing our part as ex org members because that's the other thing that always pissed me off about the C organization. Liz, you tell me how you feel about this or anyone else who's here too who's ex org. When I left the C organization, I still stayed in Scientology because back then I was still an idiot and I was a parishioner. But when they wanted to control you, when they wanted to push your buttons, when they wanted to try to force you into doing something, and it would backfire with me, even my best day in Scientology, they'd say this, once you're a Sea Org member, you're always a Sea Org member. You are still a Sea Org member. No, I'm not. And this was as a public Scientologist. I still was like, no, I left the Sea Organization. I left. It, it's just, they don't get it. Then I left Scientology. I broke up with them. They then tried to tell everybody they broke up with me and kicked me out. <laughs> but yeah, we come back. We come back to hand your butt to you. That's what we come back to do. That is what's happening. <laughs> okay. We're going to hop over to Austin because there was this interaction that I did not see earlier. And a few people sent this to me. And it is um, interesting and sad all at the same time, as is many things in the world of Scientology when we're sharing this, but my, my, this guy was in Scientology for 50 years, but check out this interaction with Acupunk. It's like, man, it hurts. No, it is. It's, it's not. not. It is too. No, it it's is. It's not. I've been in Scientology since 50 years. Then you I was know. in Scientology then, then as a know. child. That's fine. I was. People aren't perfect. The church is. The yeah, church is perfect. Is cult. it perfect that I was blamed for my molestation at four years old? Is that of perfect? Not. Of course not. Well, well, what do you say? What do you, don't you say when a child is molested that they pulled it in? Pulled it in? Who is that? The child pulled it in, sir. Are you a Scientologist and you've never heard pulled it in? Yeah, Confront and shatter. At four, years old. at four years old. It's so sad because he's holding on to, he thinks he immediately insults them as he's walking by. And there's no way you've been in Scientology for 50 years and you don't know some of this stuff. Um, like that you pulled it in. This is something that Scientology tells their victims. Well, you pulled it in. What did you do to pull it in? Oh, someone attacked you. Someone essayed you. What did you do to pull it in? You must have done something. That's totally what it is. There's no way he doesn't know this. And you'll see it's it's these, these stories, these things that happened are horrific to hear for all of us in ways more so for a Scientologist because it just hits. They automatically need to put up these mirrors to reflect and these blinders so they don't hear and they don't see what they're saying but they still heard it. And I feel like each time they hear something like that, it sticks. How can it not? How can a story of essay of a child at that age and then being told that you pulled it in not stick with you to some degree and kind of mess with your wiring in there? And that's what it does. That is what it does. And I'm saying this to somebody who is in Scientology for 35 years. When you hear these things, it does mess with the wiring. 
It's like a little squirrel gets into the wires in the brain there. And suddenly you find yourself going, wait a minute. If this is true, how can this be true? If this is true, how can this be true? And your Scientology indoctrination will kick in and or you'll go to Scientology themselves and express your doubts, which many Scientologists do because they actually think something's wrong with them. Because Scientology tells you, if you have doubts about Scientology, if you have questions, you have crimes. There's something wrong with you. You're a criminal. There's something wrong with you if you doubt Scientology. So you see how they position it and how they brand that as something very undesirable. They're just full of it. They're totally full of it. All right, here, we are going to jump over and we're going to talk about Miriam Francis and her latest video. But I wanted to thank Not That Helen for becoming a YouTube member. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The join button is up above on the channel. Thank you so much. Hard Met LA, love that. Thank you so much as well for becoming a member here on the channel. I appreciate your support. It all helps. And just so you guys know, I am making some changes in my schedule in the rest of life so that I can fo focus more on YouTube because the recaps and the interviews that I do, there's more that I want to do and I need the time to be able to dig in more and look into more things. I've, I get the most amazing emails from all of you, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. I can't always respond, but please be patient with me and know that I'm getting to it. And I want to hear from you. I want to hear if you see something, say something. There's, And I've got a few things on my list that I really want to dig into and do some videos about. And I realized, you know what? I need to free up more time to be able to do this. So I'm uh, moving my schedule around. And so there'll be more of that stuff to come. Okay, so let's let's... Miriam's video was not a very long video. You need to go and watch the entire thing. I just have a snippet of it so that we can talk about it. And let's take a little look at that. And if you don't know, Miriam Francis, she was on Scientology in the Aftermath. And she was horribly essayed by her father. And she has been working to get justice. She's been working on that in Australia, which is where she lives, and also here in the United States in California. She had a falling out with Mike Rinder when she asked for some information for an affidavit. There's more to that story. I'm kind of giving you the cliff notes on it in case you don't know to kind of catch you up so this makes sense. But let's take a look at this. While you invoke the names of several people, I wish to make it clear that this is personal between you and I. Me, a victim of child sexual abuse, and you, one of the many people who covered it up. All these years, you had kept me ignorant. You believe that you could get away with it because the people around you don't ask you questions. When you say they did it, no one ever asks you who or how, and you got used to that. Had I recorded our phone conversation, it would not have been illegal, and I never said that it would have been under the guidelines of a pretext phone call, I am allowed to record a phone conversation with anyone who had knowledge of the sexual abuse crimes that were committed against me as a child. I simply chose not to do an audio recording. However, I did take detailed notes. From that phone contact onwards, you began to engage in harassment and intimidation of me. I was fearful of you. I wondered at the lengths you would go while you invoked the... I wondered of the lengths you would go. <sighs> I'm so amazed by this girl, woman, young woman. Um, just amazed. I, I just can't even think of the fortitude that would be needed to not just learn more about what happened to her as a child, get more information, and then go to seek justice and have to kind of, in a way, justify and explain yourself. And then to be treated in a way that you're attacking. She's coming from a place of trauma. She's working through this. She's trying to seek justice. She's still a victim. She's still working through a lot. And I feel that when it comes to victims of any type of abuse, but especially like this, cut them some slack. So if you don't like how those questions come at you, you know, cut them some slack. She's been through a lot. And I think where, where I sit on this is 
it's the response. It's, it's, it, you know, and it's, we don't even need to rehash it because you guys know it's often the response that has come from the Aftermath Foundation or people from the board itself. And they do good work. I don't want to take away from that. I don't want to take away from one thing that even Mike Rinder did. He did a lot. He even helped my family when we left. He's going to continue to do work to expose Scientology. Even, you know, Mark and Claire Headley as well. They've done a lot. They're going to continue to do a lot. They've all taken a lot of hits. No one should ever take away from that. But that cannot justify how you treat people, especially people who are the victims that you're there to help. And for me, that is, that's, that's, that's the rub. That's the rub. That's why I think, and this is why I love Kelly Copter's video that she did about this and her response and her asking that Mike Rinder step down. All it would take is a reorganize of the Aftermath Foundation board to make it more diverse, to have victim, victim advocates there on the board who can communicate with the victims and help and coordinate people who have the bandwidth to have that empathy and compassion. That is not an easy thing to do. I don't even know that I could do it. But there are people, especially people who've never been in Scientology, who have that training and that background. And I think it's better that it's someone who's never been in Scientology because then they're not having their own stuff all stirred up. I mean, I can't even imagine myself as a victim's advocate for Scientology. I'd just be crying the whole time. <laughs> that's so horrible that that happened. But that's why there needs to be people who are educated and empowered and trained to deal with and help victims because I think that's what's missing. Because in Scientology, we were raised and indoctrinated that we should never be a victim. Being a victim is one of the worst things that you could possibly do. And I saw people in the C organization multiple times get in trouble when they were victims of crimes. I knew one kid who got busted and sent to the dining room to work with me where I was working in the C organization. He got mugged. He got mugged on Hollywood Boulevard. And do you know what happened to him? He was given a committee of evidence, which is like a court martial. He was punished for being mugged. You are punished for being a victim. This is part of Scientology and it's huge on the indoctrination. And though my view has completely changed on that, and I understand better today than I ever did, that one, being a victim is just that. You were a victim of something. You received something harmful that was done to you that was outside of your control. That is not your fault. It can be difficult when you've had that indoctrination and that mentality and never allowed yourself to acknowledge even those times where you were vulnerable and a victim of Scientology. But there needs to be people who can help people leaving the C organization, leaving Scientology. That's why there needs to be more than one organization. And Aaron's starting a nonprofit that's going to be able to do this. And I know that's something we'll all support. And like I said, I just think with just a little bit of switch up in the Aftermath Foundation, it could be a really different situation. The more diversity you have on a board, the more larger of a community you can help because you can reach more people. But you need to have people there who can be there as a victim's advocate and help people as they work through this. And I know it can be scary if, if you've been in any position in this organization and you leave and you go for help and then the main people on there are the people who were there when you were in the C organization. It's different for public people who leave Scientology and didn't have these interactions. And it's also different for people who were in the C organization who didn't have interactions with the Headleys or Mike, Mike Rinder. It would be easier for them to go and seek this help. I'm not saying it's every single person, but if there was more diversity on that board, they could serve a lot more, a lot more people. Because sometimes when people leave Scientology, right, even if they leave the cult behind, there's still personality. How much of this is personality versus Scientology indoctrination? It could be Scientology indoctrination. It could also just be personality, which is why you need diversity on a board that is helping people. Different personalities who think differently, who have different values, because they can help the people coming out who, guess what, think differently and have different values. I think that would... Um, that's just what I think. You guys tell me. Tell me in the chat in the comments. And remember to hit that subscribe button and please hit that like button too while you're here. Definitely. 
we're going to grab some questions here. Uh, Ginger O Snap has a comment. If they held people accountable and even people in other states, this would come to an end, in my humble opinion. Hold people accountable. So you're talking about with, with Scientology and the different organizations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Gunna Fawcett, if you come back in another life to this planet, wouldn't that mean Scientology is failing because you should go to the next planet? Um, no, because you have to, you're supposed to come back to this one, especially if you're a C organization member, because you got to do your, your billion years. But this is the contradictory part. L. Ron Hubbard, on one hand, said he's going to target two, which is another planet to set up Scientology. Maybe he'll even beat Elon Musk there. I don't know. I don't know. He's trying to get to Mars. I don't even know where Target 2 is supposed to be. That is supposedly why L1 Hubbard has not come back. What? Where was he after 21 years, right? Did he come back? No. And we all know why. Uh, so yeah, but Sea Org members don't get to go to the next planet until this planet is cleared. But that is kind of the promise that you will be able to join LRH on Target 2 after we take care of this planet and then move on to the next one. Things don't stop here on Earth. They're like, they're totally, uh, they're after it on other planets too. <laughs> I guess you got to give Scientology props for big think, right? For thinking big, because they're not just trying to clear a country, right? They're not just trying to clear a planet. It's all these planets. And the irony, it's like, you want to clear, you talk about clearing this planet and all these other planet freeing people. You can't clear one city block. You can't. In your own neighborhood, there are people who don't want you there. It, it's just mind boggling. Keeping those blinders on takes a lot of energy. Trust me on this. That was something when I left Scientology and I, I as that cult culture continued to shred for me, and it took, it took years. I really think that first decade for me was the hardest. And the last three years, there's still challenges at times, but it's been so much better. And it's realizing that I don't have to carry that. I don't need to carry that stress, that BS. And I can focus on figuring out what my needs are, my family, my partner, my friends, my community, and focus on that. And now being able to do this on YouTube and talk about Scientology, I cannot tell you guys how amazing this has been for me to be able to speak so freely about Scientology and uh, that you guys want to hear about it because, you know, you don't go too many places where it's like, I can't be out showing a house to clients and be like, by the way, did you hear about uh, the whole Mike Render drama? <laughs> They're going to be like, what? <laughs> so it is, it's a lot of fun for me too. And the freedom to be able to communicate freely is so amazing. And it is still something that feels so new to me. And I appreciate that you're all, that you are all here for it. You are right. Pearl Snappy can clear a block. She can. Definitely she can. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Pearl Snappy did a video yesterday. I don't have a link to it, but go to her channel. She interviewed, uh, she chatted with Shannon, who is in Chicago. And I loved, loved seeing this. Because again, it's just more creating community and people coming together and sharing tips. And here's what worked for us. This might work for you. Here's what you might want to check at the city. Here's what worked for me. I absolutely love that. There's so much to learn. We don't need to completely reinvent the wheel. This is why I love seeing people like Tori Magoo back in the game, back talking about Scientology as well. I absolutely love that. Lumi Dawa, when a Buddhist takes Bo, Boda. Bodhisattva? I cannot say that. So when a Buddhist takes that vow, we vow to reincarnation until humanity is enlightened, but it's not as tough as Slimetology. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. I have read a few things on Buddhism. I read this book with the uh, Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu, the, the Book of Joy. That book changed my life. It, it, I feel like that book was the beginning of opening my eyes up to so much more outside of uh, Scientology and that Scientology way of thinking. And seeing how the Dalai Lama can come together with Desmond Tutu, those different backgrounds and have the friendship that they had. And this book was fascinating because it shared, it. the guy who wrote the book would share, he would pose a question to the Dalai Lama and pose the question to Desmond Tutu. And then he would look to science to give an answer. 
And it was just amazing, different ways of looking at this, super inspiring. If you do not have enough joy in your life or you want more, I recommend reading that book, The Book of Joy. I absolutely loved it. I've given it to a few people too. In fact, I probably need to get a new copy myself. I should read it again. I loved it so much. (laughs) But it really opened my eyes to a lot. Thank you, Nancy, for sharing the link to Pearl's channel, Pearl Snappy. Get over there because she can be snappy like nobody else can. Bo Beats, thank you so much for becoming a member. Love that. Thank you. All right, let's grab some more questions here. (laughs) <laughs> Kitty, that's funny. A.A. Ron clears a downtown, LOL, with SPs in Clearwater. Sure does. Those, It's amazing to see uh, Aaron is out there surrounded by Scientology, Spit Clearwater, Lori Plays, who, by the way, I'm learning so much about Lori Plays. I was the last one to find out that she could sing, and she sings amazingly. I love that. Uh, love it. They clear the downtown quick. Scientologists go scatter. They just run away. The Sea Org members specifically, because remember... They cannot be seen on video or 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 have pictures being taken of them. Smooth Steve, SPTV. I think LRH was into Buddhism. Yes, I remember multiple times Elrond Hubbard quoting things from Buddhism, and he stole a bunch of things from Buddhism and wrote it differently and claimed this is Scientology, and I figured this out. And then later, when I left and I learned more about Buddhism, and especially reading that the Book of Joy. I was like, wait a minute, there are so many things that I still find out about today that like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I thought L. Ron Hubbard came up with that because he said he did. It's amazing. It's amazing what I find out that there's so much, there's so much. You can let go and walk away from Scientology, but uh, finding out the truth about things really puts it in perspective. And for me, it's such a tool in really being able to, to let go of that. Hip hip hooray, Bo Beats. I forgot your hip hip hooray. Everybody, your hip hip hoorays. That's right. I was supposed to hip hip hooray for the new members. So y'all got a hip hip hooray along with me. Yep. OBG Foster, Buddhism and pulling it from past lives. That's what he said a lot too, that he was just pulling it from past lives. Didn't he claim to? Oh my gosh, I'm just remembering this. Any ex-Scientologist here, didn't L. Ron Hubbard claim to be some type of Buddhist or something? Oh, what was it? He wrote a book about it, and then I feel like they hid the book for a long time. Hymn of Asia. Was it Hymn of Asia? Ooh, somebody got to tell me in the chat or in the comments. Didn't L. Ron Hubbard claim to be the reincarnation of, of, a, of a Buddha? LRH plagiarized every word he wrote. I believe that. I think that's possible. L. Fraud Hubbard. Anyone remember? Liz Ferris, are you still here? I think it was him of Asia. And he actually claimed, I'm going to have to look into that more and share it with you guys. Because I was like, even at the time, I was like, really? Because that seems like a whole Buddhism has their own thing. And now you're kind of trying to claim ownership over it. I bet he claimed that that he was this reincarnated Buddha to justify him stealing so much from Buddhism. Because a lot of what resonated with me in Scientology, what I would call universal truths, because you're going to find them outside of Scientology, I did find when I've read a few books about Buddhism in there. And I was like, wait a minute, Buddhism definitely predates Scientology. And he just stole that stuff. Hey, Jackie from Richfield, we are practically neighbors. Thank you so much for being here. I love that. I love when people from Minnesota, the Midwest too, let me know where you're watching from. What didn't he steal? Yes, Liz Ferris. But do you remember that book, The Hymn of Asia? It's a book of poems. Okay, so Corn Freak saying it's a book of poems. But somewhere he claimed to be the reincarnation of a Buddha. I remember that. I remember thinking, what the hell? Ah, yes, here we go. Power lies to paralyze. You nailed it, Nat. He claimed to be Maitreya in Hymn of Asia. That's right. That's something that Scientology didn't really grab on to and just tell a whole bunch of people. It was almost like, I think there are a few things that, well, more than a few, let's be honest. There are things L. Ron Hubbard said that even Scientology was like, ooh, yeah, maybe maybe we don't put that on the cover of the book. <laughs> it was such a thing. It was such a thing. 
Yeah, he did. You're right, Amethyst. He, LRH stole a lot of stuff, including money from people he conned. Yes, he did. Over and over and over again. Hard met LA. Do you know about El, El Paradiso Verde in Paraguay? There's a new documentary out on art. Arte. Apparently, it is a culty community started by an act Scientology member. <gasps> no, I don't know, but now I want to know. You have to tell me. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Send me your links about this. I will, of course, Google it and go down that rabbit hole. Because no, there are actually quite a few cults started by ex Scientologists. It's like they got into Scientology and went, wait a minute, I could do this. I could do this and charge money. Keith Ranieri from Nexium studied Scientology. It's crazy. From a poet, yes, the hymn of Asia. Thank you. Ooh, I need to know about that now. I'm going to need to look that up. Oh, it's just going to distract me today and I have a busy day. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of a busy day, this evening, 5.30 Central Time, my time, I'm going to be interviewing Jeff Hawkins. If you don't know him, you are going to get to know him. He go When I was leaving Scientology, Jeff Hawkins was exposing what was happening at the international base. It was a lot of his work and what he shared that helped me helped me have the guts to leave and, and just risk what I needed to risk to do it. And I'm super excited about talking to him tonight. I think it's going to be really cool. He also did some protesting with Jeff from PTS for Life in Portland. And there's a video on Jeff's channel about that. And last night, I got to interview and speak to Jeff from PTS for Life. So go ahead and check out that video if you have a chance as well, because uh, I love it. I love it. I love doing these interviews and getting to know people. It's a great way for me to meet them. And I think to learn more about who they are as well. Self is self, Natalie and Jeff, I will be there with bells on. I called him Zen and laconic last night. That's right. And we had to clear that word because we didn't know what it meant. <laughs> that was a great video. That was Jeff from PTS for Life yesterday. So that's on my channel. And this evening, I'm going to be talking to Jeff Hawkins. He wrote a book that's amazing. It's based off the blog articles that he was sharing back in the day that helped so much of us understand what was happening at the top levels of Scientology management, which only validated what we were seeing at the lower levels is amazing. I'm excited. Can you tell? Can you tell? <laughs> I can't wait. I want to thank you all again, all of you for being here, for subscribing, for liking these videos, for your support. We are, we're doing it. We're getting the word out and it's only going to get better. It's going to get larger. There's so many great things coming. We're going to continue to expose Scientology, to share many, many stories. And I appreciate it. I've been having a lot of fun too, creating the merch. Someone emailed me yesterday and she had a great idea. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make that. I did it last night. Check this out. I made these shirts and these sweatshirts. Hip, hip, hooray. It's a cult free day. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. I love that I can have fun with this. Honestly with Scientology and make fun of it at times because we were never allowed to do that. Just never allowed to do that at all. Uh, I want my SPTV. Have you been watching all the UFO UAP sites about an OT7 who is the head of the community? Stop. I mean, I love, I love anything UFO. Aliens, I'm there for it. I love it. I love that whistleblower guy who came out. I haven't been able to catch up on a lot of it because I've been so, you know, I'm either working or I'm consuming Scientology content to do these recaps. And it's really cramping my style on my other things I want to watch. So that's part of why I'm kind of redoing my schedule right now to make it more doable. But no, I don't know about this. <gasps> okay, you got to tell me. You got to email me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Tell me about this. OT7, who's the head of the community? No. A current one? <gasps> Oh, this is blowing my mind. <laughs> it's like com it's combining my favorite thing, Scientology, UFOs and aliens. Oh, this is crazy. Sold at uh, Clea Cardone is worse than a very much so F. Cardone and his twin. I don't know who Clea Cardone is. I know Elena. I'm not sure who that is. Good, good, good. You'll send me the sites. Thank you. I want my SPTV. I appreciate that. 
Um, Afila, thank you for this question. No, did you see Chris Hellcat? So Chris without a Hellcat's cookie stand outside the test center. You got to show it tomorrow. Hilarious. I would love that. If you could send me a clip or send me the video and the timestamp, Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. I would love that. And absolutely. I love a good cookie stand. I wonder what kind, you know, it's Girl Scout cookie season. I think those are out now. All right. We're going to wrap up because I could talk to you guys all day. I'm just going on now at this point. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. I hope you guys join me this evening, 5.30 Central Time, when I sit down and talk to Jeff Hawkins about his book, about his early times in speaking out against Scientology, and what's happening for him today. What's his life after a cult? I cannot wait. Thank you so much. I hope you guys all get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.